Hello, my people. It's your Negro with Aptitude and host of the Blackboard, Mickey Lee. I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel, Facebook page, or website. However you found me, let me first give praise and thanks to God for honoring me with your presence and for trusting me to be a vessel through which he can speak to you. As the name implies, the Blackboard was created with black people in mind and among them the ADOS in particular. Through this ministry, my mission is to tackle some of our most persistent challenges that have arisen from our experience as the descendants of slaves or of enslaved persons and from our continued existence as the most hated yet most emulated people group in the world. Have you ever asked yourself, does God hate black people? Or why do black people suffer so much? Or why is there so much hatred now between black men and women? If you've asked yourself those questions or similar ones, then my content is for you. In order to understand the answers to those questions, we really need to understand what we are doing on this planet Earth in the first place, who we are as black people, and who the real enemy is. The only way we can do that is by reading our Bible for ourselves and understanding it through the imparting of the Holy Spirit from God to us. Now, before you click off, and dismiss me as one of those damn Bible thumpers. <laughs> no, this is a whole new ball game, a whole new deal. I am doing this real labor of love to educate you, to empower you, and to help you secure your place on the right side of eternity. If you think that God has not made note of every single black woman whose body was abused and raped and whose children were ripped from her body and she was bred like a cow to make more children who would be ripped from their mother and sold, then you don't know God. If you think God has not noted and kept an inventory of every single black man black woman and black child who were swinging from trees, swinging from bridges, bludgeoned to death, uh, ran over by horses, strapped to the railroad tracks and dismembered, set, had precious dogs set upon them to rip them apart, then you don't know God. If you think he doesn't know the location of every single black person who was killed and suddenly made to disappear in this so-called Christian nation when they, uh, due to unprovoked hatred. You don't know God. If you think he does not have a record of every single black house, black church, black business, black township that was bombed, that was looted, that was burned down and set upon viciously, whose wells were uh, poisoned and whose livestock killed out of jealousy and again, unprovoked hatred, you don't know God. And if you think that he has not taken note of every apathetic response by so-called Christians to the despair of their black brothers and sisters, then again, you don't know God. But if you come with me, if you discuss this with me, if we can reason together, I know that you will. I wanna give you my own personal testimony at this moment, just a little bit of it. I was outside the will of God for years, several years, somewhere between seven to 10, I really don't know for sure. And I had served a ministry for about 13 years. But you know what? I became disillusioned. 
I became disillusioned and enraged by the uh, hideous treatment that I saw black people receiving and by the uh, nonchalant attitude of the average Christian church, especially non-black churches. And so I didn't want to hear from God, didn't want to hear his name, didn't want to know one thing about him, didn't, I was afraid of hell, so I didn't get to the point where I hated him, but I certainly didn't trust him, I didn't see one good reason to read his word, and I certainly didn't see a good reason to call myself a Christian. But God's grace is real, because he could have killed me at any time. He could have called me out of this life and would have had no choice but to send me to hell. Not because I was enraged with him, though that would have been one good reason, but because I was already deep in sin and doing things that were counter uh, to his law and offensive to him. But he preserved me. He preserved me and he allowed me to see that he does in fact care for black people, that he does in fact want us with him for eternity, that he created us for specific purposes for his will, and that he gave to us measures of stamina, steadfastness, and yes, peacefulness that other groups don't seem to have, that he made of us peacemakers, that he blessed us with the ability to be wellsprings, make our sufferings into wellsprings for others. Again, something that people from the dominant culture don't seem to be able to do and their colored allies could care less about. Let's be real, okay? I want you to know that it is time for a Christian who is black to talk to black people from the experience of black people so that we understand that God is not who or what white people said. Let me let you in on a little secret. They did not invent God. They are not his judge, nor his jury, nor his interpreter. We are each free to have our own individual, personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. This starts with the reading of his word, the Bible, which is his communication to all mankind. Now, once we understand what that word says, we can use it to slay all wickedness, starting within ourselves so that we are in the will of God, but then to defend ourselves from all wickedness that comes from those people who are still living in the world, whether they call themselves Christians or not. Now, you might be wondering at this point, hey, Mickey, what's up with that black beret? Are you supposed to be a black panther or something? Well, yes, of sorts. You can call me the Black Panther of Christianity. Because you see, in my mind, Jesus was the first Black Panther. He fed the hungry, he clothed the naked, he healed the sick, and he lifted up the down downtrodden. He was hanging out with the brothers and the sisters from the block. He stood up to organizations and to governments to bring up the oppressed. We can trust him. Now, I know, and yes, I want to make a point here. I believe that Jesus himself uh, utilized the Black Panthers and maybe even inspired it to work through to lift up Black people. I know it doesn't look like it in the natural, but we in, as Black people are in fact an extremely blessed group. We have gone through a very peculiar experience and emerged still praising God, though some of us, many of us, are falling away. We naturally carry others' burdens, and this is not by mistake or not by accident. Remember, he created us for his purposes. Now, black people have had our existence uh, interpreted by anybody under the sun but us. This stops now. So as you check out my videos or go to my website and read some of my blogs or hang out with me on my Facebook page, I want you to get ready to flip the script. I want you to get ready for a whole new paradigm shift as we discuss what it means to be Christian and what it means to be black. Here's a hint. 
Being black is a gift, not a curse. Once again, welcome to my channel or my Facebook page or my website. May the contents therein edify you, educate you, and empower you to the right side of eternity. Let's go together.